welcome to this plenary session, President Armin Sarkisian. Um, President Sarkisian comes to us wearing two hats. Uh, one, uh, as a prominent global thinker, who coined the expression quantum politics um, two years ago in Chamonix, and it made it to the first page of the Financial Times the day after. And uh, he is also the president uh, of a country located in a geopolitical cauldron, the Caucasus. Uh, we just experienced a very painful war. The war was uh, around, in and around Karabakh, which is historically, because Armenians lived in that area for thousands of years, and Karabakh, if you go to travel to Karabakh, you'll find churches from the 4th, 5th century, where the first Christian state in the world in the year 301, you can find them all, all in, in Karabakh. And now one of the issues that we have with our neighbor Azerbaijan and world with the uh, international community that we're asking for help, like UNESCO, how all of these monuments of culture and religion, what will be their future? We have not a nice history of what happens to these monuments. But uh, let me go back to the origin of the, of the con conflict, I think, of the current conflict. It takes us back 100 years, where dark genius, Congress Stalin, who was given the task of designing it, national issues in former Soviet Union. And he was designing then quoting his ideas, divide and rule. Eventually, at the end of the day, that part of historic army was given to Azerbaijan. And of course, for uh, more than 70 years of Soviet rule, people of Nagorno-Karabakh were always ex trying to express, and how do you express if you are a part of Soviet Union? Not easy. Their desire for freedom and their desire to basically run their own lives didn't succeed, but at the end of uh, uh, Comrade Gorbachev's era, when people started believing he was really talking about perestroika and glasnost and change, and then Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh thought, oh, this is the opportunity, we have to start fighting for our independence, and this is what started in 1988. It became a war, the first Karabakh war. Because then Azerbaijan and Armenia became independent, and the war started, that ended in 1994. And that first war was won by Armenian side. And then the international community came in, creating the OSC Minsk Group, was created by three co-chairs. We were representing the great powers of that time. One, European Union, led by France, and the French co-chair was there. The other one, United States, and the third one was Russia. So they were supposed, the co-chairs, to come up with and solve the issue basically in a non-military way. And everybody, at least Armenians, believed that. 2020, when the war started between Karabakh and uh, Azerbaijan, it was a completely different situation. Azerbaijan has a great advantage. One, used to have invested, they had the pipeline, they had a lot of cash, they have invested the cash in the military, and also they have invested in modern military. So the Armenians were fighting against much more advanced technologically military equipment, plus the full uh, engagement of Turkey with Bayraktars. And here's a new situation when the co-chairs couldn't do anything. So this war showed the changed world, the changed regional and geopolitics that this war happened. Of course, Armenians are brave. They fought 44 days against Azerbaijan and Turkey, but they lost the war. As a president, if I think about President Armenia, he has to give a message that you lost the war, but a battle. But you have to stand on your feet, you continue, because the, the, this world cha continues changing. And we have to build up a strong, a strong state, and that strong state should be based in understanding of the changed geopolitics in the world. If we don't understand, we'll be late like we did and we'll lose the next battles, be that in economy, transportation, understanding, science, and so on. Where is Armenian strength? Of course, a lot of, world, a lot of friends are worldwide. There are many of them. But the main one is that it's a small state, but a global nation. And here, in the new world, which I called quantum, you have an advantage. You have an advantage that you can build a small but strong, strong state if you engage your diaspora then your population is not 3 million, it's 15 million, a modern state located worldwide that can help you in, with new technology, ideas. 
So, if we want to have success, tomorrow, we have to understand that the world has changed, geopolitically and more deeply. We have to completely change the way we see, understand, and even the way we have our logic working. You see, if in classical physics, the particle from here comes to here, there is a trace. In quantum, this particle here, there's a probability because it could be anywhere here. So it's a completely different philosophy or logic of it. In order to understand what's happening, we have to put aside our classical thinking, look at it and find a new model, new rules, new philosophy in order to understand and then to run it. As a result of the growth of the world, technological growth, we have what we have. We have hyper-connected world. And our connection is with like the for quantum particles with the speed of light. Your telephones work with the speed of light. So each of us is a particle in this new quantum world. It is, for us, unpredictable. Uh, why it is unpredictable? Because the laws have changed. The particle doesn't go from here to here. There is a probability to be anywhere. So the, our thinking is wrong. We have to start changing ourselves. There are several important categories that we are living. For example, if one of them I would, I would say, it's, it's, I would call it asymmetry. Because if you take how the wars are run now, it's not only the, it's on, not only the drones, it's the cyber war. And that cyber war is asymmetric. There is no symmetry, geopolitical symmetry, that the war could be between states individual contribution to that because of the world that we're living is going to be asymmetric in size and effect. Interaction, that brings us also to democracy. Classically, democracy, every five years we go, we vote. The whole democracy becomes a democracy of electoral day. In many countries, including my, my own country, democracy doesn't have at all checks and balances. It goes even further. Because now, basically, you, you can express your opinion to your parliamentary member or to the public every day, every minute, every hour. So it's a daily, monthly, or minutely democracy. And we have to find a form in this world that individuals can express their idea today, whatever the president, prime minister, minister, or an MP is saying, to find the formula how this opinion can be taken into account properly and positively. Small remark about COVID. I do think the world has changed it not because of COVID. The world was in a process of a change. That's why COVID happened the way it happened. The same virus 50 years ago would have been different for the world. Even 30 years ago would have been different. Because this is highly interconnected. So COVID is not the reason of change, it's a consequence, it's a catalyst, it accelerates the change. And of course, the quantum world returns us to discussions, and we have to rediscover institutions, values, and democratic models. So welcome to quantum world. And I will be very happy to use this opportunity to invite you to next summit of months, which is in Dilijan in Armenia, 23rd, 24th of October. There we are going to massively tell not only the problems, but the way we think that we can find solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you. And maybe this is actually where we are indeed, at the end of a cycle of modern globalization. It was there forever, okay? I was uh, the, the lenses we had then, and they're very much like flows, uh, financial flows, good flows, what I call shredded or fragmented globalization. So there are still some parts of, uh, of our act. I'm in the time of Second World War times, and now since you can borrow this a similar term again, just to show the mindset. For many of you who are not familiar with the term in here, just thinking about the leveling up plan in the Western liberal democracy, thinking about building your own economy. We, we need materials, but there's currently a shortage of materials. This is organized in 2022. 
So we should take a few containers on board because the price. So we are here at the uh, Summit of Mind. And the Summit of Mind is uh, a summit we created now uh, almost nine years ago. And the idea is to mix insight with wellness. In other words, learn about the world around you, but learn about yourself and how to, uh, and how to manage a better life. So we, uh, we've had uh, so many uh, leaders coming and we are so proud that uh, President Sarkisian has been uh, coming over the last uh, three years now and that we already did a summit in Armenia and we are planning to do another one in, uh, in fact uh, soon in, uh, in October. Um, and the reason we like it is that uh, we uh, at the Summit of Mind, we like also helping promoting new interesting initiatives and we think that uh, uh, Armenia uh, with its uh, history, obviously, but its recent uh, history, uh, the fact that you have so many scientists, the fact that it's located somewhere between uh, Europe and Asia in the center of this complicated region uh, is, uh, is, a key to the, is a key to the future and there are a lot of initiatives we would like to support.